It was a thought-through position. Uh, I had read widely as a teenager, and I come to the view atheism was right, that it was the future. And it was not as if it was just sort of way going with the cultural mood, although at that time the cultural mood was moving in that direction. It was much more my individual consideration. This is the best way of making sense of things. Atheism is the only intellectual option. And that, as far as I was concerned, was the end of the discussion. When Lewis converted, he famously described himself as the most reluctant convert in all of England. What what was your experience of, of the lights coming on in that way? Was, was was there the same sense of, oh my goodness, this is really true, or, or did you embrace it wholeheartedly? I think, well, first of all, it was unexpected. I, I did not expect this to happen. But it wasn't quite the sort of experience Lewis had. It was more sort of gradual crystallization or realization that actually this isn't right, and this is. And so I, I can't really put a date when I moved from one to the other. It's much more just a growing realization that I had made a mistake, but a correctable mistake. And in effect, that, that I would be able to move away and embrace something. And the criterion was the same, you know, what makes most sense? of things. My intellectual, my conversion was actually very intellectual. It was basically, this is the best way of making sense of things. And obviously, that meant that I had a rather rational view of Christianity to begin with, although, of course, it was enriched as I went on. But certainly for me, Christianity was a sense-making uh, template, if you like, something that really helped me to make sense of what life was all about. Uh, science fills in part of a picture. And what it fills in is all that we can know. And I began to realize that actually that was not true. Science had its limits, that actually there were insights that we could have that came from outside science. And therefore the scientific, um, if I put like scientific way of thinking about life was to be welcomed, but it was not the full picture. It was in effect only part of a bigger picture. And therefore I began to realize there was a need to tell the full story, to see the full picture of which science was only a part. And therefore, there are two points that really I found very, very important intellectually. One was, if science fills in one part and faith fills in another part, how do they interact? Okay? But secondly, and much more importantly, uh, the realization that science is not of ultimate significance. It tells us something that's important, but it only does it at one level. And so for me, religion is not about contradicting scientific explanation. It's saying there is more that needs to be said. There is an extra layer of interpretation which science, for its own good reasons, does not want to bring into the picture. And also I was studying the natural sciences at school. I wanted to go on and study science at university. And I came to the conclusion, look, science says there's no God. End of discussion. And look at all this religious violence. No religion, no religious violence. It's easy. You go work it out. And so I was an atheist when I was a younger man. In fact, I'll go further than that and say I was actually really quite an aggressive atheist, someone who thought that religion was for losers. In fact, I sometimes get a bit nostalgic when I read Richard Dawkins because I think, you know, I used to be like that. So it's really quite sweet in a way. But then everything changed. And what happened was I went up to Oxford University to study science in detail. And I was forced to rethink everything. I began to realize that, you know, the case for atheism wasn't as good as I'd thought. And also Christianity, A, wasn't what I thought it was, and B, it turned out to be rather more exciting and interesting than I'd thought. And so to cut a very long story short, in my first term at university, I said, this is for me. I want to be a Christian. I think it was an intellectual conversion. It was my mind suddenly saying, this is right. And as I've grown older, I've discovered there's a lot more to Christianity than simply being right. But actually, that was what captivated me in those days. And, you know, it still captivates me today. I think one of the discoveries I made was that in the sciences, there are many things that scientists believe but can't actually prove to be true. And that story gave me permission to begin to think thoughts that I had thought were illicit, like... <laughs> you know, there might be a God, there might be a deep meaning to life, that the way the world is might reflect a deeper meaning beyond it. And so there's no way that kind of way, you know, simply moving from science to Christianity involved me suddenly saying, oh, the resurrection happened. You know, it was much more beginning to consider this in detail, beginning to realize, you know, this big picture makes an awful lot of sense. So it's gradually beginning to explore a different way of thinking. If you'd like standing inside it, looking out from inside and saying, hey, this works. I'm beginning to realize this is something I could take very seriously indeed. A particular phrase that I've seen crop up time and again in your writings, which is where he talks about 
um, I believe in the sun, not because just because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. And that is a, an analogy. And, and so is that a sense in which the way Christianity appealed to you as as not just seeing it in itself, but also seeing the whole world through its lens. Well, that's right. And obviously I've got a sort of affection for Lewis because, like me, he came from Belfast. <laughs> and actually, like me, he was an atheist to begin with, then discovered faith, although he discovered faith a lot later in life than I did. But Lewis's quote, I think, is, is very, very good because he's saying, look, faith makes sense in itself but it makes sense of everything else as well. And that's the way I feel about things. And in many ways, I keep quoting that bit of Lewis to, to indicate the intellectual robustness and vitality of faith. There's more to faith than that. But for me, that's what really matters. Theism makes rational sense if you think that we are limited to what human reason can prove to be true. Christian faith is about being liberated from the prison house of rational thought. It says there is more to life than what reason can discover. It's not irrational. It goes beyond reason. It's like leaping over a wall and discovering on the other side there is a beautiful landscape which you can't see from inside the prison house. I want to say, first of all, to people who are listening to me now is... Since I used to be an atheist myself, you know, I, I've been there. I understand it. And I think actually I can say something helpful to people in that situation. But if I was talking to an atheist right now, here's the sort of thing I'd want to say. Maybe we need to trust our intuitions as much as our reason. This deep intuition so many people have that there must be more than what we see around us. That there's something deeper, something more significant, maybe just round the next corner, over the next hill, there's something there and we haven't found it yet. That's a very good starting point for a discussion because one of the big issues is going to be, will reason take us there? Well, reason can tell us that two and two make four, but that isn't going to get me excited in the mornings. But supposing reason points hesitantly and says there might be a God. Don't know what it's like, but there might be one. And then I'm able to say, actually, I can go further than that. Not against reason, but further than reason. Say, there is a God, a loving God, going beyond reason, but continuing the trajectory that reason has begun. Faith brings reason to fulfillment. The problem is atheism simply says, reason, that's it. No, no. Reason starts the journey. Atheism stops. Faith says, no, we can go further than that. And when we go further, we discover the most wonderful country, one further stop along the line. A, particularly as a young Christian, I did experience what I call quite severe moments of doubt. How can I prove this? What's the reason for this? And sometimes we make a distinction between cognitive doubt, I'm not sure this is true, and existential doubt. What's the point of it all? Mm. And I, I've been down both those roads. I think what I want to say to people is this. Number one, if we get worried about doubts, very often it's because we haven't actually explored our faith properly. Apologetics is basically about realizing there are profoundly good reasons for faith. We need to know what those are because it's good for us to know what the foundations of faith are, what its ramifications are. That's part of our discipleship of the mind, which is a normal part of the Christian life. And of course, you can see where I'm going from here. If you sort these things out for yourself, when your friends start saying to you, hey, is faith a delusion? Hey, what do you Christians say about this? You can say, I'm so glad you've asked that question. Let me tell you, it's good for you, but it's good for your witness as well. You think of Jesus meeting the disciples by the shores of Lake Galilee. Did he say, follow me for the following six very good rational reasons? No. He just said, follow me. There is something intrinsically compelling about the person of Christ. Every Christian can tell the story of how they met Christ or how Christ has given a new direction to their life. Telling that story in our postmodern age is a wonderful way of witness. It's also a wonderful way of saying this is not just true, this is real. Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, 
and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Further in the passage, upon ample more teaching, when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. Of course, during this time, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious leaders, had placed multiple strenuous burdens on those who they taught, those in the synagogues, the, the Jews of this era. They put so much burdens on them um, outside of what was even written in, in the Torah. And Jesus is teaching self-examination first. First, you ensure that you are in obedience before placing burdens on others, burdens which may compel them against the faith. If you are new to this channel, welcome. We are on a journey to 100 atheists converting to Christianity videos. What, about 13 in here so far? Putting up two a week here. If you're not new and you are looking for a way to support the work here, one, you can share these videos. Two, I have two ways to financially support the channel, either hitting the thanks button um, below the video or via the buy me a coffee link in the description. You'll see some of my past favorites in the end screen. Christ is king. Every knee will bow. Absolutely.